Last video I talked about a strategy of betting called the Martingale system. It's a strategy where you always chase the total amount you've lost so far by betting that total amount plus two, so that when you eventually do win, you will win two guaranteed. A lot of you saw the flaw in the system was that the amount of money you'd need to sustain it would be infinite. The issue is that even if you have a really huge amount of money, as long as it's finite, the expectation value from playing this game is zero. That's because with a very small chance, you'd run out of money to keep betting and you'd lose a lot. I didn't believe this until I did the calculation because it just seemed so unlikely to even lose that many times in a row that you didn't really need to worry about getting to the stage where you'd be betting big so you didn't have to worry about folding. But let's do the calculation and see what happens. Everyone has some number of losses that would mean they've lost enough money that they wouldn't be able to pay the amount that they need for the next round and so they would have to give up. Let's call this number of losses for a particular person n. n can be very high or very low, it doesn't matter. The person only has a 1 in 2 to the n chance of losing this maximum n times in a row. And if they don't lose, then they win 2. And that's most of the time, with a probability of 1 minus 1 over 2 to the n. But in the unlikely event that they do lose, their total loss is this sum of losses so far, which we know is 2 to the n plus 1 minus 2. So we put all of this together in the expectation value formula. The probability of not folding times the gain plus the probability of folding times the loss. And it magically works out to zero. The way to explain this is that when you play this strategy, with a good probability, you win a modest gain. But with a small probability, you will make a disastrous fall, and it averages out to zero in expectation. The higher your value of n, the less likely you'll lose when you play this game. As n approaches infinity, the chance you can fail goes to zero. In the version where a person can always afford to gamble more, they will always make two. As a lot of you pointed out, the casino also has a maximum bet for this very reason so everyone has to stop playing eventually. So this strategy clearly doesn't work. If you play it lots of times, you'll end up with zero on average. But what if you only played it a few times? And what if you capped your maximum bet at a very reasonable price so that you wouldn't mind too much if you did lose, even though it does mean you'll lose more often? Let's try an example. Say you set your maximum times of losing at four. The probability of losing any one round then is just 1 in 16. So you'd think you'd be pretty safe if you only played a small number of rounds compared to 16, for example 4. But the thing is, you'd lose money unless you won every single one of those rounds. But the probability of that is only around 77%. Nowhere near a guarantee, especially considering how much you stand to lose. Plus the amount that you can win is just 8. In my opinion, you'd be way better off getting a job. That solves the paradox entirely for the real world as far as I'm concerned. But there's still a paradox in my opinion, mathematically. Let's look at the game where the person playing never runs out of money. You might say, well, that would require them to have an infinite amount of money already. Not really, since each time they play, they only bet a finite amount and they can always borrow money to play because they're guaranteed to make it back. And you might say, well, there isn't even an infinite amount of money in the world for them that they could borrow. Sure, but maths doesn't care what sort of world we're in. We could have been in a universe with different physics that allowed the universe to be infinite, and the maths would be the same. So this is the paradox for me, mathematically. This random red or black game should have expectation zero. You just feel like that must be true. There's no way on average to make money from a game of complete chance. But what's the expectation of the Martingale? Well, it's two. You will always win two. Or using the mathematical formula, we can see the same thing. In fact, I can make this number anything I want. For example, I can bet 50 more than my total losses each time. Then the expectation is 50. But I can make it worse again by using this strategy. Say you've lost a few times so far, and it's the nth round. Then bet all that you've lost so far, plus 2 to the power of n. Look at that expectation value. It's infinite. 
So the real paradox for me is that you can somehow take a game that you think should have expectation zero and then actually make the expectation whatever you want, including infinity. And yet when you restrict to realistic cases, you always get zero. This paradox showed me that my intuition about expectation values is wrong. There are situations where it breaks down badly. That's why I really like paradoxes. If the mathematics is sound, it means that the unsound thing is something in your own way of reasoning. It forces you to acknowledge that.